Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at cast iron, how I season it, and talking about the process that we do for seasoning. And when it's all seasoned up, we're going to go out, cook on it, which will help season it more because you're using it, but it also is a negative effect where the heat and um, the use of it will actually take some off it, especially depending on what sort of heat source you're using. So you need to look after it but once it's a fully seasoned well used piece of equipment it lasts for the rest of your life so this is a grid I bought got it on discount because camping season and barbecue season is finishing so I'm going to do a seasoning on it it says on it it comes pre-seasoned all cast iron say that but the real reality of that is it's only seasoned enough to stop it rusting it's not really good for cooking it it's your food will just stick to this so they season it enough to stop rust and that's it. So what we do is we give it a proper seasoning and you'll see this is grey at the moment. When it's done it'll be black and it'll be shiny. It'll look like it's wet but it won't be. It'll just look like that from the fat. So let's rub some fats into this and I'll show you what fats I use. So the best thing I found for seasoning is just lard, pig fat. It's animal fat, so, and it is a great seasoning. So this is, all I use this lard for is seasoning my pots. I don't use it for anything else. So I'm just gonna rub this on, and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. So all I do is put a liberal amount of rubbing on. This will melt and go all over this when it's ready, when it's hot. rub in the cover even though like I say it will eventually heat up and cover it all anyway and the process of this seasoning is that as you heat up this cast iron it will expand in the heat and then the pores of the metal opens up and once the pores are opened up this fat will get into them and stick to them people that don't know much about how to season if they look at their pans they use in their oven daily they end up getting fat stuck to them they always cleaning it off well that's what you're aiming for here is the fat to stick to this and stay on it you don't want to wipe it all off afterwards or try and scrub it off you want it to stay in it so I'm putting it everywhere all over the thing not even just the cook cooking surface it's going all over it as I say this will completely change it when it's been heated and over baked you're going to get smell from the oven you're going to get burning because that's what is that going to happen you're going to burn this into the metal itself so temperatures I'm going to turn the oven on let's just see what the temperature difference will be I'm going to put it on about 220 it's 425 I've got a thing in the cupboard, it tells me. So let's get this oven on. About there, 220 ish. You could preheat your oven, I haven't, I've just turned it on now. And we're going to throw this in. The other side hasn't been greased, but I'm going to flip it over later and do the other side. I'm going to do this side first. And then close it up times one o'clock so we leave that in there for about an hour and then I'll come back turn the oven off let it cool only a little bit or I'll get a glove on take it out flip it put some more grease on it and then put it back in about an hour exactly get a glove on and we'll have a look Peter's got his dinner cooking on top in that time he wants something to eat See that steam where well, smoke coming out? That smoke is the burning fat. And that looks like it's wet, but I can tell you that ain't wet, that's dry now. So I'm going to flip this over. As you can see, the back's grey. And the front was black, the griddle area. 
Now I'm going to rub some more lard on this side, it's going to be very hot. There's loads on there. Right, it's been another hour. So let's pull it out and have a look. Put the glove on. Hopefully, it's all completely dry. Because if this is brown at all, yeah, it's still wet. You still see the fluid running because I put so much on it. And it's all run to one side, so I'm going to flip it around. Let it pour a bit down to that side. So we can see the reflections on that. The oven's obviously not level and it's one into one side. So that would have just kept on going on one corner. It would have gone hard eventually and a bit thicker on one side, so we'll leave it in. Just gonna pull this out of the oven. It's only been 25 minutes since I turn it around. So what I'm going to do is I haven't got all day to keep burning this. I'm going to pull it out, see how much is on there. You can see it on there. I'm going to get a thicker coating in some of this because there's more fat. There's more fat in some areas than others. But that's fine. It doesn't matter as long as it goes hard. So I'm going to leave it back in. I think it might be more runny. If that was more runny, I was going to wipe some off with a tissue, which you can do. But it seems it ain't, it ain't that bad. But it's starting to dry now. I'm going to leave it up for another half hour and see how it looks after. The thicker you can get that coating on there, the better it's going to be for non-stick. Go have a look at it. Put you there so you can see when it comes out. It's still smoking a bit. So if it's still smoking, it means it's still burning it off. It looks wet, but it might not be. That might actually be... I'm not going to touch it, obviously. It's still warm, but you can touch it. Let's get right in there. It looks like it's wet, doesn't it? But that isn't wet, look. I can rub it. still warm but it's dead dry real good non-stick there too hot to pick up it burned me but I can put push down on it quite a lot of pressure you can see that great big fat crease there where it's actually left a ridge yeah that's totally dry so it's all done basically just cook on it now so let's get outside Today we're going to be doing some cooking on the griddle, the cast iron, which you've already seen me season, so this is our first cook on it, let's see what it cooks like. I feel like we're going to get some sticking, but not a lot, because it needs to be seasoned over time, it takes a while to get a good seasoning down on the cast iron. So let's have a look at what we've got in the bag, get the cast iron out, get the food out, and we'll see what we've got today. We've got some old burger buns, can't go wrong with the burger buns. This is just a bottle of olive oil. Got our gloves in case we need them for our heat, hot stuff. Gas can. I've got a Trangier triangle stove, but without the burner, because I'm going to use the gas burner, which is in this bag. And then there's the grid itself. I've packed in some bags because obviously when I take it home it's going to be dirty and I need to put it back in the bags. And there she is, seasoned up. Ready for the first cook. So we've set the cooker up. We've got the Trangier Triangle running the gas burner inside there because I want an even controllable heat to go onto this griddle. If you get too hot on the cast iron you can burn off your seasoning which might happen on the bottom side when it's actually got the heat on it. But we won't know until we've done it, so this is the first time for me. I've got it as level as I can see it with my eye, so I'm gonna shove the griddle on, and we'll see. So we'll just put it on there, rest it. it. Looks fairly level to me. We'll find this out when we're cooking, because our fat will run, but 
you know, as long as it's not too far out, we'd be all right. So let's get some food out. Let's see what we've got in the bag. Not in there. That's my utensils. Got an onion. I want to do an onion with these burgers. We've got some quality burgers here. Aberdeen steak burgers. Aberdeenus. Aberdeen. And there's two big ones in there. If they're quarter pounders, I don't know what they say there. Just says steak burgers. Because the quarter pounders, when I look at them, they're tiny compared to these. These are massive. So those two are going to be going on. And I've bought these. I've never had these before. They're hot dogs. And they're the Polish hot dogs. So I don't know if they're different, taste different. I don't know anything about it, but I brought them. If they're no good, I'm sure there's a lot of animals around here that like to eat them. Because they're going to get tossed into the bush if they're no good. Not in the packet, obviously. So they're going to come out. So we'll cut up this onion. Get some rings to go on there. I think I'm going to go with the fat that's in the burgers to start with. And if they start sticking, I'll bang some fat on an extra little bit of virgin oil. So I'm going to cut this up first. And just get some rings. Get prepared before we start cooking. Otherwise I'll be panicking and rushing and burning. We don't need that, do we, Nathan? No, we don't. Not again. So, I always throw my... If I'm in the woods and I'm not actually sitting outside someone's house or in the town or wherever I am, I like to throw my stuff back into nature. I'm not one for taking home biodegradable. I think that's just wrong to start with. But obviously, plastic packets, I'm not going to do that. I'll take that home. I used to burn all my plastic when I had a fire and like when I open fire cooking. I don't even do that now, I just take it home. You've got to think about the planet, haven't we? So it's a nice thick onion rings. And that's that, done. And they're gonna go on the grill and the grill is going. Not that one though, that one fell off. <laughs> I'm not going to put these on until I've got that grill hot, so I'm going to light it up now. Get them ready to go on. It's on low. I mean, that is low, low. That's going to heat that up quick. Cast iron does heat quick. I'm going to need a glove in a minute, I'm sure of it. So, we're just going to tip and flip to get these burgers on. I'm not messing about handling them. I don't want to touch them because I haven't got my gloves and I don't want to wipe my hands. I just straight on. And that's already heating. It's not hot enough to cook, but it's warming up pretty good. Cast iron is fantastic. Heat source is there, but it will spread. That will be the hot point, but it will spread that heat around everywhere. Now this is a small little unit to carry and the reason I bought it is because it was on reduced because the barbecue season's finished. These were 15 quid in Asda and now they're down to 750. So I bought it. You know, I don't let a bargain go. Something like that is backpackable. It's a bit weighty but it's backpackable. I love it. So let's throw these on and see if we've got the sizzle yet. It's sizzling. Come in for a close-up, Nathan. Get the sizzle on that, you can hear it. Amongst the birds. Should get some nice browning on these lines because it's got the griddle on it, the griddle lines. Got my usual cutlery, my small ice tongs for ripping and flipping, and a spatula which is good for flipping. It's a flipping good spatula. Without any fat on there at all, these aren't going to look like they're cooking, but they will soften. These are going to stick at first until they release their fat back into the pan and then they should release themselves. That is a low heat, but it doesn't take much. 
Looking forward to these, they're smelling good. Can you smell them from over there? I can't, yeah. It's because it's coming up for me, isn't it? I wish you saved me one. Oh, yeah, I was going to make these. What are you buying? What did you bring? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just doing camera. <laughs> There's not enough food for two. Yeah, can you smell them yet? Yeah, a little bit. Come over and get a close up and have a sniff. Oh yeah, I've spent an hour on the onions. Sounds good. Yeah. And I'm hungry. These will stick at first, because everything sticks at first. They're not ready to release. There's no point in pulling them, you'll just tear them and leave it stuck to the griddle. You need to let them release themselves. But they should nicely be lined and look fantastic like that onion is starting to look. Did you bring the cheese? Do you know what? I forgot the cheese. And the bacon. And the bacon. Mm. I brought some plates. I nearly forgot them, I was about to leave. <laughs> it's been a long day, mate. So it's been a long day, it's not even half past five. It is a um it is lunchtime for our tea. Release that burger! Well the cooker's pretty stable, isn't it? That's not bad. Not bad. pretty healthy really, there's no extra fat on it. It will just be the fat from the meat. Then hot dogs, I think we'll do these first, eat them, and then perhaps bang the hot dogs on or something. Yeah, whatever you want. Because if they're want. nasty, I don't want to mix it in with this. Yeah, true. I'm not saying they're going to be, but I'm not a big <laughs> hot dog lover anyway. I like hot dogs. Did you bring the mustard? No. Oh, <laughs> mate, did what I bring did, the what, sauce? What did you bring? I had sauce ready to come. Don't tell me I didn't even bring the sauce. Um, I'll be angry with myself. Not angry with Arby. I don't think I'll put it in. Do you not? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't bring anything, did I? I had it on the side. It was next to everything else. What do I do with it? Not in there. I really feel like I've let myself down again. Yeah, if you have let us down. I think when we finish this, we're going to McDonald's or something. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Did we talk about how this is a little scout area where the scouts come to? There's a scout up not far away from here, down that way. This is one of those little setups I use. I've, I didn't know this until someone said to me in the woods the other day when I was up there doing a curry. They, they stopped and goes, have you been to the scout area? I said, I don't know where that is. They said, it's down there. So I've seen it. I didn't know it was a scout area. They said, oh yeah, they all come up here and do a bit of burning, a bit of cooking. I thought, oh right, makes sense. Because I've wondered why the council yeah, never um, cleared all this up and got rid of it because it is actually a designated area. Do you want to have a little look around? Yeah, I'll pan around.
they're going to release themselves if I break them off we'll have a load of meat stuck. I can't believe I forgot the sauce and the cheese. And the bacon. And the bacon. I've got the bun. I hear a dog. The dogs are coming already. Yeah, dogs smell everything, don't they? Get a little bit of stick in, but I knew we would. It's only been seasoned once. It needs a bit of um, this and that. It needs a bit of cooking on it. But when you wash these, you don't want to use wash like liquid. When you wash with cast iron like this, just use a nice firm brush, but a plastic one. Take off all the food so you know it's clean, and then just re-grease it with a paper towel and a little bit of um, olive oil, whatever oil you've got. Just give it another little coating before you pack it away, just to keep it from rusting, because they will rust. So I'm going to give these another little flip. Oh, I've got something in my ear. A bit of fly in my ear. Give these a flip. But they are starting to make that noise now where they're starting to sizzle a lot. Keep, I'm just keeping these warm by putting them on the edge. But the, the heat won't spread as much to the edge as it does in the centre, but it's still warm. So we've got our buns cut over there. There's Nathan sitting there. There's my bun. It's gone from the smell of freshly started to cook to they're not going to take too long because you can smell the bit where they're starting to really get them griddles on them and the burns coming. But we want it. It's the flavour as well. There's nowhere near that's burnt in the middle if it's even cooked in the middle yet. But there's a good sizzle on it. So I'm going to give this burger a little break in the break so we can see the centre of it and see if it's cooked. I always check my food. I don't ever give people food or cook for someone else without checking their food because I feel that that's just wrong. And you get a reputation that you can't cook, especially if it's undercooked. If it's overcooked, they're usually just like, yeah, it's alright, but you don't kill them, you know? So let's have a little look. I'm just going to snap it. It won't go fully snap, so we won't destroy our shape. That's cooked. Can you see in there? That's yeah, good. But you've still got a burger. It's not broken it. So I think they're ready to come off. We'll turn the gas off and we can do the hot dogs after we've had something to eat. Let me build these burgers. I'm sorry there's no sauce and there's no um cheese or bacon. Yeah. I'll give you the one I didn't break. I've got onions. You can get onions. There you are, sir. Lovely, thank you very much. Now I'm going to film you eating it. So there's the griddle. That's how the damage it's taken from this heat. Well, it's just it's just cooling now, it's all turned off. But here's Nathan, this is what damage he takes oh, from the burger. Oh, try it. It should be a decent burger. Yeah, it tastes nice, good, yeah. Yeah, it's just missing a few little bits like cheese and would have been better, but it's nice. It's Bacon, mm. sauce. You got your onions, stop moaning. I've got something to eat, to be fair. <laughs> and that's good. Thank and we've got much. some hot dogs to go. We've got buns left as well. I'll try them next. So I'm going to put the put top on mine and I'm going to do a bite out of it. Thank you. It feels like a substantial burger though, doesn't it? It's hot. Mm. I can't 
quite salty. So I've just lit the stove on a very, very low heat just to give me a little bit of warmth. Because we've just eaten, so we're not in a rush to eat these. We don't mind it taking a little while. Nathan's built a little bench. He's learning some bushcraft over there. <laughs> He's just put that little bench over on this against that breeze block we found. So we've got ourselves a little quadrangle sort of thing going on. This has started sizzling. It's just come up. And we've got a little L-shaped bracket. So anyone that comes up now, they can't get through because we've blocked it all off. And we own this place now, it's ours. <laughs> so when these are nicely um, grilling and brown, I'll show you them. And then we'll get some buns ready and then we'll get them on. But you can hear them. So we've got some nice browning now on these sausages. And we're going to put them in some buns. Nathan's going to do the taste test. Why me always? Because I've never read them, they might be horrible. You know, you're only here to do the taste tests. <laughs> Not the camera. Yeah. You know, you have a job. Don't shirk your responsibilities. We've got more buns, so they're going to fill the other buns. There we go. So you can have a go on that, Nathan, while I prepare the other buns. And I'll film you eating it, actually, instead of me preparing them buns. So let's have the camera. I'll turn the gas off. Because we don't need that now. Then. And then, get me seat. Nathan, we'll give this a go. They yeah, taste nice, like actually. your standard hot dog, just missing some sauce, some cheese, some onion, exactly that, <laughs> and all the condiments that go with it. <laughs> what well, you would normally have. But the buns are nice, though, aren't they? The buns are nice, and the hot dog, standard hot dog. Yeah. They're just missing them few bits. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, Sorry, mate. I'll let you down. Yeah. I'll make up next time. Yeah. So I'll give it a go now. Then seems that he says it's all right. I tell you something, they taste better from being put on that griddle than they do from boiling water. They always taste wet, don't they, and soggy. This tastes more like a sausage. Oh yeah, I like these. I'm going to go and get some more of these. Oh, we're going to make the rest of them up and then we'll have a little rest and then we'll chill. So, lovely. Mmm! Can you smell it? Mmm! Smoked! Rawr. Lovely. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one. That's goodbye from me and goodbye from... Nathan. See you later. Bye bye. Thank you.